Joseph's story is another rags to riches story of success. But his success had nothing to do with luck. Will you please, if you've not already, take luck out of your vocabulary. There is no such thing. God is the secret of Joseph's success. And punctuated through the chapter and later, you read again and again, God was with him. God's hand was on him. God was there. He saw him. He protected him. At the same time, Joseph worked diligently. And the success he experienced, he earned the hard way. He worked for it. As with many promotions, privileges come alongside. And with privileges, more and more secrecy. Less and less oversight, and you're able to enjoy privacy. Joseph certainly did. By now, we, could, we would use the, our colloquial statement, he had it made. It's interesting. Thomas Carlyle, the Scottish essayist, is spot on when he wrote, adversity is sometimes hard on a man, but for one man who can stand prosperity, there are a hundred who will stand adversity. You see, when you are prosperous, <laughs> Temptation is around the corner. You read nothing in his days of adversity of being tempted. But now that he has it made, he becomes the object of Mrs. Potiphar's attention. But Joseph refused. Will you remember the three words? But Joseph refused refused. He said no. And he meant it. Joseph is great theology. He understands that his God is the all-seeing God, the all-caring God, the God who was holy yesterday is still holy today. The same God who has entrusted him with success is now trusting him to uphold his commands. And he sees God as very real, more real than the woman lying in bed, begging him to join her. Joseph stared her down with admirable discipline. And in no uncertain terms, he communicated his healthy and awesome fear of God. In a word, no. No. There's power in the word, no. I urge you to use it often.